I've had a radio amateur license for over 60 years, but I haven't been active for the last 40 years or so. Uh, mostly because of my location. My first attempt at an antenna blew, blew down. So I decided to try to put an antenna in my garden. I had a friend uh, try out my transceiver. The receiver part was dead. The microphone was deader. The only place I could think of to put a radio was my workshop, which is a water heater room. That meant we crawling under the house and trying to find a way to drill a hole through the bricks. Somebody had done it at one point, but when I tried it, I came out through the leg of my bench. And then I bought a non-switching power supply. The next project was trying to figure out where to put an antenna, and I really don't have any place. It's all rock. I thought I might use an umbrella foot, but that didn't seem very practical. So I got a grounding rod for an electric fence, which was steel covered with copper. And I mounted the antenna and the uh, radials on the same pole. So I pounded the uh, grounding rod into the ground and screwed the antenna on. I couldn't cut off the uh, steel post. That would have probably taken a week with my hacksaw. It did tune on all the bands. On the other hand, I wasn't picking up anything, really, very, very little. And I realized that the garden wasn't an ideal place to have the antenna. <laughs> so the next project was to uh, get the antenna a little higher up. I've built a lot of electric bicycles and tricycles and most of them have the motor out of center on the wheel. So this is called dishing. You tighten up the spokes on just one side and loosen them on the other. And I figured that would make a pretty solid flat holder for an antenna post. A little short one. And I got some copper tubing and pounded it into the uh, wheel and sawed it off and I could saw copper. Then I bought a big roll of wire mesh. I decided that uh, I wanted to uh, make a sort of a magic carpet with galvanized wire meshing to put under the uh, ATAS 120A because my garden is not working very well. It was tuning, but I didn't hear anything. So I got uh, a roll of mesh that's about a meter wide, and I measured the roof. There's a little flat spot that's about three meters by four and a half meters wide. And I made three strips that length with 15 centimeters overlapping. And then I kept reading that you're supposed to use split bolts to hook the two piece, to hook the two the sheets together. And uh, split bolts seem to be expensive and kind of hard to get hold of around here. So what I did was I took um, about 15 centimeters of overlap between the strips, and I got M8 bolts and, a, and washers and I put them through there, and then I put the nut on the top with another washer, and that gives probably a better contact than you would with split bolts. And then what I did was I put the three strips together, and I screwed them down with a ratchet wrench by laying it flat and standing on it uh, right next to the nut. That gave enough friction on the head that I could 
make it a little uh, tighter on the uh, nut with a ratchet wrench. So that's how I made my little square of magic carpet. Uh, the wire mesh is pretty good because it's welded and it's galvanized and I don't think it's going to go anywhere and probably not rust very much either. I let my son help drag it up on the roof because I'm not very good at climbing anymore. I grounded the antenna pole to the uh, mesh. I still had a bunch of uh, leftover radials. I'll probably ground them to bolts too. And then I tried tuning it between 40 and 6 meters at 5 watts, which seemed to work pretty well on all those bands. I did uh, have one contact on it to test it. Uh, a Norwegian who had a remote antenna in Spain and that worked very well. I was so surprised that I had to use the user's manual to the transceiver as a log book. Okay, the other station was on the side. Okay, all I got was something... 